Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookish Room and I'm back with another video. As you can see from the title of this video, I am here to talk about some popular book talk books I refuse to read. Like, refuse. But here's the twist of this video because it's easy for me to say I refuse to read something, but I low key want y'all to convince me otherwise. Now, here's the thing with watching this video, there are going to be some of you who have read these books and you're going to be like, Ashley, you need to read this. There's going to be those of you who are going to be like me, like, Ashley, don't even waste your time. This is not for you. This is not your lane. And then there's going to be another group of you that is going to be like, I haven't read these. So whatever you want to do, go for it. <laughs> so this is one of those videos where I actually want your input. I want your feedback. Am I making the wrong assumptions? Are these books that you think I will like? Now, I will say there's one book in particular that there is by no means, no will, no force, no nothing. I, child, I ain't finna pick it up. It ain't finna happen. It's never going to happen. So there's just that. So if you're going to go for this title, just know in your heart of hearts that Ashley's never going to pick it up and that's okay. It's perfectly fine. It's all good. It's fine. All right. So let's go ahead and get started because it's actually really like it's not a long list, which you know I didn't want to do a long extended out the world type of list it's what seven titles okay first one we have is love in other words I think this is a title I'm gonna say in love in other words is it in love in other words or love in other words anyway either way it's by Christina Lauren and I actually have read two Christina Lauren books before so this author duo is not someone that I haven't experienced before but here's the catch I am not a fan of their writing style. It doesn't work for me. And I've read two books for them. And so to see that this book is particularly popular on TikTok, the likelihood of me reading it and wanting to pick it up is kind of slim to none. Because if I've given you two times, there's a chance that maybe this is not this is me and you, we're just not compatible. You know, we're not swiping, we're not swiping right on each other on, on Tinder. And that's okay. It's perfectly fine. It, it It's just we're not vibing. But then again, part of my soul is like maybe three times is a charm. I don't know. But I think that in terms of writing style, I, it, it wasn't bad writings. And I couldn't tell you the two books that I read unless I pull up my Goodreads, which is what I'm definitely not going to do right now. But I gave the other two books three stars. They weren't horrible, but I felt like they weren't anything that was mind blowing that just kind of like took me to the next level. So there's that. The one that you will not, I mean, by no means ever convince me that I'm going to read. I refuse with everything in my soul, in my body, every fiber I'm not picking up this book and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I am not a Colleen Hoover fan. I am not a Colleen Hoover stan. I do not judge those who read Colleen Hoover. Read what you're going to read. You're going to read what you're going to read. It's not my business. I'm not reading it with you. Uh, Colleen just don't do it for me. Um, I actually have read a Colleen Hoover way back in the day. I mean way back in the day before uh, she now is like a social media phenomenon. Uh, it, uh, this she's been writing for years and so I always I think my little brain cannot reckon with the fact that she almost gets a new author treatment but she's not a new author. It's kind of like you've been cranking out this work and all of a sudden you have your breakthrough like this is her breakthrough and so I I had no interest back then. I heard about the possible like toxicity of the relationships in her books prior to what <laughs> the criticisms that are coming out today. So she never really was of high interest for me. As a matter of fact, I remember when Colleen Hoover was very much so closely associated with those who were looking for like new adult titles. Like that's how long I've known that name in, in reading circles. But I, I have no interest in her as an author, like none, nothing, nothing. I, I not out of curiosity, not for a hate review or a negative review or a rant review, however you want to phrase it. Like there's literally nothing. There's no, literally, I have never been this adamant about like not being interested in someone's work which is unique for me. And it's not because I want to join in the bash and train of Colin Hoover. It's just that I don't think that her works, what she writes about, 
are going to be for me in terms of like mental heads. I can't do it. I cannot. I can't do it. I mm -mm. Not for me. So for anybody who tries to convince me that Verity is a good book, don't waste your time. Don't. And I know that it's not like her typical contemporary romance. It's a psychological thriller. Don't waste your time. I'm telling you. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. All right. The next one that I have is Daisy Jones and the Six. Now, I have read uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid before, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I have not read anything since then. I have not really had an interest in reading anything since then. I think the concept behind Daisy Jones and the Six is not something that I am necessarily interested in. I think the whole uh, band thing, I, I don't like making the band. Like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not interested in that, which is fine. I know some people love it. I know there's a TV show adaptation. Uh, there's also some questionable things about Taylor Jenkins Reid and the representation, especially when it comes to the Latin community. And so I just, you know, I think I'm in this spirit or phase in my life where like, if I feel like me and you are not going to vibe and there's some egregious things going on that would cause me not to vibe with you I think at this point I just kind of stay away I think it's just in the best interest of of you of me and all parties involved like I think so all right the next one that I have is it happened one summer by Tessa Bailey I actually I just said Colin Hoover is the only author no actually Tessa Bailey is another one I except I have read Colin Hoover I have not read Tessa Bailey to my knowledge if uh, I the only time I think that could have been a possibility is I used to listen to the Read Me Romance podcast quite a bit and I think Tessa Bailey had one book on there that they read and they're all like really really like short stories but I think that Tessa Bailey was on there at one point I cannot remember off the top of my head so that would have technically been the only exposure that I've had to Tessa Bailey but in terms of like full-length novels I've never picked one up and I've never had any interest and I know that there is a lot of back and forth and controversial stuff in in relationship to Tessa Bailey and covers and all types of <laughs> all types of interesting things I outside of that stuff like I don't know like I, nothing about Tessa Bailey's books like interests me which I don't know what that is y'all I, I it's not that I'm not like I love contemporary romance but it's just like I don't know I look for a little diversity in my romance reading and I'm not gonna get that from Tessa Bailey y'all I'm sorry I like a little bit of melanin um in my romance and so it's just it's not something that I'm gonna get out of Tessa Bailey which Tessa Bailey apparently like you know that yeah, stay in your lane do what you do whatever but I just not no interest like I'm just not mm. I never looked at a Tessa Bailey book and was like oh yeah that synopsis I really want to read it I mean I'm right there when like you know new books come out and and people are hyped up about it and like you know I watch like the person that's just like not invited to the party but you're like standing outside looking in the window of the house and everybody's partying and you just weren't invited in the house like yeah that's like me but the house is Tessa Bailey's books and then the people in the house are the readers and I am the kid on the outside watching everybody party and have fun except instead of feeling excluded I just feel like it just, just wasn't for me <laughs> <laughs> just I wasn't meant to participate I guess I don't know but yeah Tessa Bailey now if if you know you think that there's a particular book that would fit my reading taste if you've been here for a while I think most of you know my reading taste although I do have a tendency to read all over the place so I don't know if I really have reading taste but there are a handful of people who I know can kind of look out a book read the synopsis and be like yay or nay for me like whether I would or would not enjoy it so I'd be interested in hearing y'all's thoughts about that the next one I have is if he had been with me so the reason why I'm never going to read this one is because I actually got spoiled for this book I know the entire plot of this book uh I feel like Renee read this 
Renee, if you watch this video and I'm wrong, please correct me. But I feel like we were doing sprints, right? And I think Renee had been reading the book or was finishing up the book. And then we were all just like, well, what did, like, what happens in the book <laughs> at this point? Like, we just want to know, like, what happens. And so uh, we were told everything and I would have been pissed. <laughs> I would, if I would have read this book, it would have been very, very like aggravated. But I think that this book elicits like a lot of emotions. I think Monet said that she saw on Facebook like somebody was like in the shower. It was something. I don't know if it was on Facebook or some something else, but like somebody was in the shower with the book, crying. I don't know why that would be a thing. I have no idea. But I heard, you know, I heard that. A lot of people have a lot of emotions granted when you know the ending it's kind of like okay yeah I see why some people would be emotional but then for me I'm kind of like yeah I would know I would be pissed <laughs> be so pissed off so that definitely was just not that was not the book for me so if there's any book two books on here that are just like no and no and no and no and no it definitely would be Verity and if he had been with me because I at this point why would I pick up a book and I know that the ending is going to piss me off that would just be ridiculous for me to go back and read a book when I know for a fact the book is going to piss me off and so I just would rather not do it to myself. All right so the next one that I have is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Now here's the thing the reason why I'm kind of like girl no I ain't finna pick this up y'all it is 562 pages. I am one of those people who feels like I just don't believe that any contemporary romance can justify to me that it should be 500 plus pages. I don't see the purpose. <laughs> I, j I don't. What could we be doing for 562 plus pages? 562 pages? That's like, what's, what's the book by Emily Rath? Pucking Around? Is that the author, I think? Whatever the, whoever pucking around is like, what, seven? Why are we writing contemporary romance books that long? What is that purpose? <laughs> what can we possibly be doing that we need a contemporary romance book to be that freaking long? If it was any other, I think, subgenre of romance, I would be like, ah, okay, all right, you know. But I feel like my thing with this one is I, I, I think I picture 562 pages of a contemporary romance and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to be bored. I'm going to be bored out of my mind at some point in this book it's gonna lose me and I'm not gonna be happy and then I'm gonna be like why did I do this to myself 562 pages of contemporary romance that is a heck of a lot that's y'all for a contemporary romance now I know a lot of people enjoy Lucy's score I have friends who really enjoy Lucy's score um everything that she has written they have enjoyed or they you know have have not hated it maybe not loved it but they thought it was like you know just a a a decent book and so I just um yeah yeah that's a lot <laughs> I keep trying to process that 500 page contemporary book like no and the last one that I have on this list is the fine print this is a me problem because I think I've had some friends also read this one that have felt like you know either they've been like ah oh, you know this it was an okay read or they actually have enjoyed it I don't think I'm a billionaire romance girly I don't know I just don't maybe because I'm salty because we're like basically headed towards doomsday with our economy here in the U.S. and it's impossible to live and getting groceries is just ridiculous and trying to live and trying to breathe costs money at this point existing is just a financial burden so the idea of reading a billionaire romance right now I think would just piss me off and make me very salty and make me very aggravated and I don't think I've really ever had any interest outside of the fine print. I don't I've never had any interest in reading a billionaire romance. I've never clung to it even outside of what's going on now in the US economy. That's me being extra but even like even outside of that I've never clung to a billionaire romance or had like a high interest in billionaire romance so 
mm, I'm very interested in seeing if someone could convince me that that would be something I would enjoy. I did hear that it has like a theme park type of feature to it which makes for a unique setting. I'm not gonna lie and say that that didn't pique my interest but the billionaire thing is just kind of like mm, 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 mm. not for me. All right y'all let me know in the comment down below comment box down below what are some TikTok books that you do not ever want to read or if you would like convince me to read some of the ones that I listed or say Ashley no stick with it stick with your gut don't do it don't do this to yourself <laughs> well, however you want to do it however you would like to do it as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and if you're looking for ways to follow me on social media or support the channel all the links will be down in the description box below and I will be back with another video soon Bye. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down all around.